Uh, welcome back to the second half of our show. Now, since we started the show in 2006, we've had some very talented people join the team. Each of them has brought something unique, and I couldn't be happier to have them as part of, of the show. And, of course, I'm talking about Teresa Eccles, Kathy Whirling, Walter Eccles, and Sean Thompson, and, of course, Dustin West, who uh, is perpetually back on the controls, it seems. Now, Teresa was the first member of the team to bring the mommy voice, so to speak, to the table. She's been able to give us the perspective of uh, experiencing the parks with kids in all age groups. Uh, Stella, uh, from the time she was a toddler, yeah. um, then Grace, of course, into the teenage years, and, and Max now as a young adult. Uh, and of course, her personality and enthusiasm are boundless, as are her tears. Um, she has been an amazing addition to the show, there's no question about it. And she's also turned out to be a wonderful Dreams Unlimited Travel agent. I gotta make sure I get that little plug. Oh, she's starting to tear up already. I, I am not. She, she My is, glasses are fogging <laughs> over. She's starting to tear up already. Um, Didn't expect that. You know, Kathy Whirling uh, is, the, the, the best phrase to use for Kathy is super fan. Uh, she loves everything and anything Disney, and that passion just comes out of her. It doesn't matter what segment she's doing, what show she's on what the discussion is. You just see that passion uh, come out of her. You said and that much nicer than I would. I would have said Disney geek. Uh, I think you're a super fan. I think you're a super fan. Um, and, and, you know, that, that has, you know, because some of the rest of us maybe are a little, I don't know, jaded. Um, and you're not. You're not. No matter what your experiences with Disney have been, there's never been that, that jaded edge to you. You just have that, that, that enthusiasm, that super fan enthusiasm, which is such a great addition and voice uh, to the table. Um, Walter brought that uh, spouse who really isn't into Disney uh, edge uh, into, <laughs> into the show. That uh, So many of our listeners have the spouses that go along. And Walter's kind of experienced virtually everything there is to experience in the Disney universe. And, Slowly, he's become, you know, he, he's really gained an appreciation for it, and he brings that, that, that perspective to it without being jaded and eye-rolling about it. He looks to find the best in it and to find things that he can enjoy, and I know so many listeners have said to me that things that he's talked about and, and things that he's reacted to positively have really helped them in planning their vacations with... Well, I think a lot, I was like a lot of people who only thought it was... <clears throat> the Magic Kingdom, and since I didn't have kids or anything like that, I was like, you know, I wasn't that interested. But th there's so much to enjoy about Disney. I and mean, when you start seeing all the different things you can do, uh, it really is an amazing product. And there's something that for everyone. So if you look, you'll find something that you will enjoy. And you know, prior to doing having those experiences with Walter, if you had asked me, you know, where was nature in the Disney universe, I would <laughs> would have told you it doesn't exist. But you know, we found it. We found it at Fort Wilderness. We found it in fishing excursions. We found it in the American Southwest. We found it in all these different places that, you know, Walter loves to experience. We found it in Alaska. Um, things that I never would have looked at or thought of that have become, you know, it's, it's opened my eyes to some of that stuff. So Walter's brought that, that, that perspective to the show. Of course, Dustin, uh, you wouldn't be watching this uh, right now if it weren't for Dustin. Uh, Dustin envisioned the setup that we are using for this, and uh, a week after he started working for us. And yeah, I said to him, at some point, I want to bring the show video. A week later, he had this almost creepy mock-up of the studio <laughs> that he did. I'm sorry about the that. Sims, <laughs> that he did in The Sims. <laughs> And that is creepy. <laughs> it was, oh, yeah. but you know what? It was incredible. Detail, it was the detail amazing. that he put into it. His first week on the job, <laughs> and a month later, we began purchasing the equipment that now makes up what you're watching. Right. And uh, you know, he brought he's brought an amazing passion for video, as is evidenced by our YouTube channel and what you're watching now. And as someone who's listened to the show from the very beginning, he's brought a great passion uh, for the show. Uh, that has helped us uh, really kind of develop and change a lot of what we're doing and made the show so much better. And of course, he's a huge Disney fan, although he's a huge Disney fan that apparently hasn't done anything. Because every time we go any place, it's, I've never done this before. I'm like, okay, really? You've been at Disney once or twice, right? 
but uh, no, he, he's he's added so much to the team, and we're thrilled to have him with us, and Thanks. so thankful for the amount of work and effort he's put into creating what we're doing right now. Uh, last but certainly not least, Sean Thompson. Uh, Sean is the most recent member of the team. Sean came on board during Podcast Cruise 3.0. Uh, Sean was hired, and Sean was hired to work side-by-side -side with Corey Martin as our assistant webmaster, and he's been really contributing so much to the site and helping Corey out and helping develop uh, new things. Now, something Sean has been working on for quite a while, since actually since he started, it was the first project I assigned to him, is the second thing that we have to announce uh, today, so the second new thing that we have to announce today. On February 6th, when the video version of the Diz Unplug goes live, so will the new mobile version of the Diz. And what we have is nothing short of fantastic. I'm so excited about this. What we're taking a look at here is the new homepage, which is uh, an all new layout and it's specifically designed for mobile devices. And before you guys ask me, yes, it is good with all smartphones, not just with the iPhone. And no, there is nothing to download or buy. If you just go to www.info.com on February 6th, this is what you will see. It's a great, it's a great touch-friendly interface. Uh, you'll see that we have uh, video integration here, photo integration, uh, some of the dynamic information that you'll find on the Diz, like uh, current park hours, and of course, social media integration, which is where you can find all the latest news and everything being posted onto our Facebook page. The new menu system, the slide out menu system, I absolutely love the way he did this. Uh, it makes it very, very easy to navigate around the site. You'll have full search capabilities of all the information on the Diz, as well as things like park hours, park maps, restaurant menus, and of course, we can never forget about our theme parks. And we have a nice clean design to showcase all this information and again, with more photo and video integration, as well as information on individual attractions. For example, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. You can come here, get some information on it, see what its status is, if it's open or if it's in rehab, height requirements, what the length of the ride is, and whether or not Fast Pass is available. Plus, if we, you know, whatever photo galleries we have associated with a particular attraction or theme park, whatever videos we have associated, will all be available here as well. And uh, let's say that you want to find uh, one of the menus uh, in the, uh, for Casey's Corner, for example, in the Magic Kingdom. Just click on that and all the information available in the Diz, uh, dining, the Diz dining database. Got to get used to saying that all right here for you. Updated dynamically as it's updated on the Diz. The other thing that uh, I'm really excited about, too, one of the most popular areas of the Diz, the park maps. Uh, all of them available here. You'll be able to find all the different theme park maps, clickable, expandable, and easily navigated with this great little interface that uh, Sean has has put together. And uh, this is uh, this feels to me much the same way it did when I first started the Diz back in the back in the day. Uh, this feels to me like a new version of my site. Uh, a reimagined version of my site for a new age and let's face it that you know so much traffic now is going mobile and uh, this is a new version of the Diz that you've created uh, Sean and I think you should be really proud of the work you've done on this thanks I'm Pete really really excited about it you really see Sean's talents come out here because when I handed him this assignment I said you know I just want a mobile version of the Diz and kind of I guess I'm, I'm getting to know my age because I thought about it one way, just kind of a very one-dimensional version uh, of the site. And when Sean came back to me with his first set of proposals, it was completely beyond anything I had imagined. And uh, that's the great part about hiring young guys uh, uh, to come into the, uh, to come into the, uh, uh, the operation. And they've added so much. Sean, you've added so much to this. You've done a great job on this. Thanks. I'm very excited. And uh, so am I. So am I. Very, very excited. As I said, the mobile version of the Diz will be available February 6th. Nothing to download, nothing to buy. Just visit www.wdwinfo.com to check out all of Sean's great work. And with that, please help me welcome to the stage Kathy Whirling, <laughs> Teresa Eccles, 
Walter Eckers, John Thompson, and your host for this segment, Dustin West. Take it away, Dustin. Oh, this is wow. Is. <laughs> oh, this is wow. Well, welcome back, everybody, to the uh, second part of our show here, the Diz Unplugged live uh, taping here in the Buena Vista Theater aboard the beautiful Disney like fantasy ship. Um, we hope you enjoyed that announcement of the mobile Diz, the mobile version. Uh, very good work, Sean. And, Thank uh, you. We also hope you enjoyed, obviously, the announcement of the video version of our show. I know me and Pete and the whole team have been working really hard on that. Um, so welcome back. We do have some housekeeping, I think, we want to start off with here in the second portion of the site. So uh, anybody have housekeeping? Teresa and I do. We just wanted to thank everybody that donated for the flatties. You can see them all out here in front. We ended up with 76 that cruised with us? Well, we started with 76 and we ended up with 80. I don't know where the extra yeah. flatties came from. <laughs> they multiplied. <laughs> but uh, we also wanted to give a total. The flatties um, coming on the cruise raised $2,000. Wow. Uh, also, two of our meets were also fundraisers. Bingo raised $330. Wow. And Bunko brought in 150 for a grand total of almost 2,500. So wow. pretty cool, huh? Wow, That's very good, very good. Our our flatty um, flatty vacations for give kids the world. Uh, we're over 7,000 now total. So we're pretty proud of that. What was your original goal for that? Our original goal is 10,000, but it's we didn't have an end date, so it's kind of an ongoing. Right, it doesn't have to end with the podcast. No, 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 we have Keep flatties that are going um, to Walt Disney World. We have flatties that are going to different places. And in fact, um, Flatty John <laughs> <laughs> plummeted to their death. Flatty John and Flatty Pete are out running the 5K right now. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> that's the only way I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're having a lot of fun with that. So, well, I want to thank everybody. Very good, very good. Sean? I do have some housekeeping. Uh, John's a horrible person and forgot to thank Kathleen. <laughs> oh. oh, my God. <laughs> I just wanted to say that uh, she's been working very hard, and she's a big part of putting this all together. So thank you, Kathleen. Very good. That's a horrible person. Way to throw your bus under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> boss under the bus. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, very good. So um, I guess we also have some things we want to talk about uh, with this podcast crews in general we've had a lot of fun hanging out with all you guys and uh, I think we all have some oh oh my god <laughs> it only happened happened once we got up here yeah wow <laughs> yes it did <laughs> um, so we just want to share any funny stories or good experiences or anything like that we want to talk about with this cruise um, we'll start with Walter? Right. Yes. I had an incredible uh, adventure this time. I got to go down the aqueduct with my buddy Skip Potter. <laughs> and you were talking about, you know, all our listeners and getting to see people. They just couldn't see me because of my hair, I guess. I, uh, for 20 years off and on, I'd have a flat top. And so when I showed up from G.I. Joe to Hippy Dippy, nobody <laughs> <laughs> knew who I was. I'm walking by people and you can just... There's no recognition. <laughs> I'm just yeah. walking by. I'm just like, <laughs> I'm, I'm the invisible man. So it's just really strange. And people would come up, if I ever started talking, it's like, I hear Walter. <laughs> Some weird guy walked really? by, but it's Do Walter's you voice. <laughs> yeah. So that was very, very strange to have so many people not recognize you. I walked past you twice, and I've been looking at you for. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and the other thing is, if you. Come on the ship, and there is no ATM, of course. If you bring a black check, you can go to guest services, and you can get cash that way. Yeah, really? we found that out. Yeah. So bring a blank check with you so you can have a cash backup. Yes, since there's no ATM. That's I had to get no idea that. you could do it. Mm -hmm. 200 they told me yesterday, yeah. What, the limit for that? Yeah. $200? That's what I was told yesterday when I went to... Wow, okay. Huh. That's... 
a little different there, but. Well, that's a good tip. Yeah, it's a way to get cash. I did not know that. <laughs> Very good. Teresa? All right. My rapid fire, I'm going to start with my funny story. And that's sitting right down here in front. One of our funny <laughs> stories. Kathy kind of had to go together. Um, the people we're sitting with at dinner are Mark, Stephanie, and Zach. Raise your hands. Raise your hand. Okay. <laughs> Best, I'm sorry if I've sat with any of you others in the past, but best table mates ever. Yes. <laughs> yes. And one night, I don't remember which night it was, um, Mark wasn't happy with the food for whatever reason. With the appetizers. With the appetizers. I think he had about six or seven before the night was over. We call him Mr. Appetizer now. And he still wasn't happy with any of them, but it was fun watching him, you know, overeat. Eat a little bit of everything, I think. <laughs> and uh, it was right. And... Zach went from quiet, not speaking. And this is the cool thing about a long cruise, because Stella was at the table, too. Both of them started out not talking a whole lot. And by last night, Zach was making faces that I had only seen my children make. <laughs> <laughs> you know when your kids are comfortable with you? And, and so he was, he was a pretty cool little kid. And we, had, we all had a lobster experience last night. It was like spiritual. It was one of those things I w always wanted to cross off my list on a cruise. So we all enjoyed lobster together. And yeah. our other good story was Cabanas. You want to tell them about that? We went, um, was that Monday night? It was formal night. It was formal night. That's another one of those things I wanted to cross off on my list. And we went up to Cabanas for dinner, and it, it was a sit-down. And we had the most awesome servers. Um, Teresa embarrassed them at the beginning, and then they couldn't do enough for us. Well, the first thing he said when we came up was he'd just gotten his hair cut, which I thought was an odd thing for for. You know, like I'd seen him with his hair the other way. I hadn't. But oh, and his name was Yoga, and he introduced himself. Yeah, he came up. Like, he says, "My name's Yoga." yoga. <laughs> and he, did you meet Yoga? I mean, he was so adorable. And so he, he's not Valentine, but he was cute. <laughs> and they did the other. They did a magic trick, and I was so embarrassed for them. It was he. He took a toothpick and put it in a napkin. And then he had, was it, I think it was Katie, you and I break it. We broke it into little pieces within the napkin. And he had everybody blow on it. And then he did this, and the, and the toothpick fell out in little pieces. And I'm going, <laughs> wow. <laughs> this was awesome. And he had walked away so embarrassed. But it was the highlight for me to see his look, the look on his face, because it didn't work. And he, he blamed, tried to blame it on Stella because she wouldn't blow on the napkin. But mm, no. <laughs> what if, what I don't understand is the bizarre trend with some of the servers on the ship who are aspiring magicians. Mm -hmm. Oh, I expect, I want, don't you want little, them to do little tricks for you and stuff? When, when I was on the Fantasy a couple months ago, I had uh, this one guy, um, and he was our assistant server, and he, he was actually really good mm -hmm. uh, at the magic tricks, but his catchphrase was, bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> uh, and like with every move he made, he'd pull out a card, choose a card, Choose a card, bada bing, bada boom. It's like it, it's kind of wearing off, you know. That's supposed to be the punchline of the the uh, the magic trick, but yeah. I, I liked it when it went. It didn't go well. We all <laughs> had it, it, we laughed so much at that table. It was it was fun. And Teresa and I got the chance to go to hell. How many of you <laughs> Who went, went to, to hell, hell while you were here? We went to hell and back. But it yes. was actually hotter at the turtle farm than it was at hell. I thought. Yes, I went to hell and back, and I got the T-shirt. Yeah. And it wasn't as big and big as I thought it was going to no, be. No, it was. We were there. But 15 I did see some, minutes. some of my friends that were there yes. before me to greet me. John and Linda were there before to mm -hmm. greet me when I got to hell. So, so it was, was nice to know we knew friends in hell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, more flies okay. are falling. Are they dropping to their death? Up. They're getting. They're tired. dropping like flies. It's the hot, it's the lights that are drying up their little stickums. <laughs> so. Um, my rapid fire is actually something that I stumbled across um, by going to the show every night. Um, the first, I always sit in the side seats because we always get there late, which totally upsets Grace every time because we always have to sit in the side. So I sit comfortably, no problem. The second night we went to the show, which I really didn't care for that show. I don't remember what it was. But anyway, so Grace had got us seats down front. And I went to sit down in the seat, and my butt would hardly fit between the two arms. I'm thinking, holy crap, did I eat that much <laughs> the night before? Well, then, the next day, Bill, raise your hand, Bill. <laughs> he tells me, I, him and his mom show up, and they have a tape measure, which I have here. 
and they're measuring seats. I'm like, what are you doing? He said, the seats aren't all the same size. Well, I was relieved at first because then I knew, you know, my butt hadn't grown that much. So then we started measuring them. There is a four inch discrepancy. The seats down front are only 16 inches between the arms. And as you go out to the sides, it can go up to as much as 20 inches. So, and it's bizarre and it's, there's no random pattern for it. I don't know what it is. And it's the same in here. The seats down front are narrower than the seats on the sides and the back. So how long did you spend going around measuring I every spent. single <laughs> seat? You did a lot of research. I'll put it up. I borrowed Bill's tape measure. And we I, could put that on the Diz, right? Yeah. yeah. Just map out each seat mm-hmm, in the that's theater. That's right. There you go. <laughs> because I was on, I, at first I thought sitting in the middle, I was uncomfortable because of the people around me. But no, it was because the seat was incredibly tiny. And only made for little tiny people that can get within 16 inches. So, mm. you know, I thought this was a cool thing. Oh, yeah, Pete's down here. <laughs> they darn rest you go up. But then you got to actually, you know, thigh to thigh with someone you might not know. And, you know, that can be interesting. So, anyway, that was my big find this time. Cool. Kathy, do you have anything to add to that? Or are you guys kind of a shared experience? Well, here? we're a shared experience. And then I have a, a rapid fire or my little tip for the cruise. Sure. That if you've listened, my daughter's always very excited about hearing the um, the horns. They refer to them in the, the navigator as a whistle. I never really thought of it as a whistle. But anyway, on the at sea days and here at Castaway, they will at 12 o'clock every day play the different horns, whistles, whatever and it's when you wish upon a star and it also you know answers the second line with makes no difference who you are so the um the dream and the fantasy can do that the wonder and the magic can't do the second line and they also have yoho and i wrote these down because i'm going to forget them it's a pirate's life for me it's a small world be our guest high diddly d an actor's life for me and being the person on the cruise that hasn't seen disney movies i didn't know they said an actor's life for me i don't know what i thought they said but it wasn't an actor's life okay speaking of this up until this cruise she had never seen beauty and the beast what (gasps) she had never seen cinderella all the way through oh my goodness we went through I don't know how many Disney movies, and her and Katie had not seen these movies. I was just in shock. But I was telling her that since now that you know they b- built the Be Our Guest in Magic Kingdom, and it's so beautiful, and they're like, I know there's more to this story, but I've never seen the movie. So having watched the movie, it, within the first five minutes, Katie and I went like, oh my goodness, it all makes sense now. <laughs> so, well, yeah. <laughs> Disney likes to put a little backstory in a thing. Well, I, well, see, that's the thing. For all the, you know, like the Lion King and all that, I'm like, Disney does a great job at creating a story, but I didn't realize... It's called realize, a movie, though. But see, I didn't realize how close it went. Yeah. So I've watched several Disney movies now, so I'm not a Disney movie Well, we movie went through virgin. the whole list that, that Grace and I could think of, and no, 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 I haven't seen that, no. Oh, I saw part of that, and I'm like... Ugh. It just yes. threw me because that's the way I started with Disney was the movies. You know, so, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. Mr. Sean Thompson. All of my stories involve drinking too much in Skyline. <laughs> <laughs> so they have this drink there, and they have a drink for every uh, city that you go to. So like um, the one in London, there's one called the Perfection, and I swear it's just nail polish remover with a tea bag in it. <laughs> <laughs> and, so they bring you this martini glass with a drink in it, and it's got this tea bag sticking out, and you're supposed to steep it in your cocktail. I don't. Did weird. you? Oh. Yeah, was I did. It good? And the pink stuff comes out. It's like tea. And they bring so you this tiny like little square plate to put the tea bag on it. Did it smell <clears throat> like nail polish? It was the strongest drink I've ever had. Wow. Yeah. It was just vodka, I think. You had six of them, right? Yeah. And then I. I had to get him back to. He gave me a ride back to my room. <laughs> 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 oh wow. Wow. This is so sad. <laughs> it is kind of sad. Um, but they did this cool thing there where it's called um, the Skyline Drink Around the World. And so for 59 bucks, you can get a booklet of 11 drinks. And so you like prepay for them. And you end up getting a pretty good deal because I think you get like three for free. And you get a stamp, and then you get to bring home this passport book. Do you drink them all in one night? Or do I didn't do it, but I, th- I assume you do it in the beginning of your cruise, and then. Oh, okay. So it's it not a one the... night thing. You can. No, I, okay. I don't think you're okay. supposed to drink eleven in one night. <laughs> okay, that worried me. Yeah. Okay. 
Cool. And uh, for my funny story, I guess, I spent a lot of time, uh, me and Pete have been up at Cove in that adult area, um, spent a lot of time up there. So I enjoy seeing all the kind of eccentric characters that make their way into that adult area. Um, and there's quite a few, and I'm not going to point anybody out or, or name anybody. And I don't, <laughs> and I honestly don't think it's any of you, uh, but there is. Uh, no, it is. There's a few. I, I, <laughs> I, I have found my, uh, my new favorite person, and his name is Shortsman. And he likes to hang out at uh, the, uh, the adult, the adult uh, pool. And I think Shorts he. Shortsman? Shortsman. He Are wears, they short? He wears short shorts. Are they blue? And, and he has a photographer following him around. Oh, and wow. he's kind of an exhibitionist, I guess. He's, Is he nice to look at? Uh, no. I guess. Okay, I don't I, know. <laughs> hey, we're going up I, yeah, He's a character, though. Um, so, uh, I hope that's none of you. <laughs> it's John. It is John. <laughs> <laughs> but, if... <laughs> If you want to see some interesting characters or make new friends, uh, head up to the adult area. Um, my rapid fire, um, for those of you like us that went to Costa Maya and didn't actually do an excursion or a port adventure, you might have realized that there's not a lot to do Mm-mm. at that port. It's Costa kind of... Maya, that was the little colorful... Right, you walk through the little, little colorful pyramid and there's senior frogs there and, and all that. Um, now, we didn't do it this time, but I have taken excursions over just down the street past this lighthouse. There's a beautiful beach town, and some of you may have taken excursions over there. They have massage tables. They have lots of little cute restaurants and um, lots of bars and stuff like that. And it's a really quiet, relaxing place. You can't really walk there. You probably have to take a cab. But if you ever go on a Western Caribbean again, and you're not a big fan of Costa Maya, take a cab over there. I don't know the name of it. Um, how's that? Tropicante is the name of it. And Mary it's. Jo, yeah. Oh, that's the that's bar. The bar Mary oh, that's jo. all she knows. <laughs> Thanks, Mary Jo. <laughs> Mahawal? Okay, there we go. It's beautiful. And, and little Mexican dogs will chase you, and it's. Wow. Yeah, and it's fun. So, very good. Maya. Did anybody else hold the baby lions in Costa Maya? Was I the only one that did that? The baby lion? Yeah. The lion they had two little baby lions, and for a dollar amount, you could hold them. Their mom abandoned them. If you go up, you got the story. She had eight cubs, and she abandoned these two. Or the guy got rid of the mother and took the babies. I don't know. Just Either way, I held one. I think that's more likely. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, very good. So the next thing we want to do now that we've talked about our rapid fires is we want to move on to our favorite things of the year. Yay. <laughs> There's some confusion. Is that wrong? Is, is it going anywhere? <laughs> yeah. And I just want to uh, talk a little bit about what the favorite things are. I mean, every year, it's, uh, it's one of our end-of-year podcast traditions. Uh, the team talks about their favorite things uh, throughout this year. And um, we have every one of your names in this little bucket here. And if your name is called, when we mention our favorite thing, you then the you will receive... A favorite thing. The thing. If you are present in the room. <laughs> if we call your name, you do need to be present in the room. And uh, we will contact you next week when we get back with the info. <coughs> and we'll get all your information and get the uh, prizes out to you. Um, and, of course, Dreams Unlimited travel employees are not eligible. Aww. 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 Um, but we're going to do our favorite things up here on the table. And then after that, we'll invite the original podcast team to uh, come up. We have a microphone over there and we will do their favorite things. Let's so, speak briefly. Okay. who would like to go first? I'll go first. Okay, Sean? Um, so I listen to a lot of music when I'm working pretty much all day and uh, there's this online service that I use called Ardio. So it's basically just radio without an A. Um, it's kind of similar to Spotify but you make playlists and you can listen to streaming music wherever on your phone. You can even uh, upload music to your phone and then listen to it offline. So it's a really good service. So, that is my favorite thing. So the prize would be a one-year subscription to RDL. Very cool. Yay. We ready? We can draw an A. Brum. Drum roll, please. A one-year subscription to RDL. Yeah, RDL. to Roz. 
Yeah. Ross Lanier. Ross Lanier. Yeah. There she is. Yay. Yeah. 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 Very cool. Congratulations. I'm just going to write Sean's thing. On yeah. The <laughs> Walter? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like music also, so my favorite thing is the jam box, um, that portable music player. The right. um, it's a little yeah, it's a speaker, thing. a little speaker. Yeah, yeah. you can. It's Bluetooth. It's Bluetooth. Cool. Yeah. It really yeah. blows the music out. So you can you, yeah, you can play cool. music from your uh, phone, from your iPad, and set it anywhere you want. I think it's great. So that's it's my cool. favorite thing. All right. Very cool. Going so in the box. A jam box. Not looking because I can see all the names. I'll look this way. This goes to. Wow, Marco? Ma Mazico? Marco M? Are you here? Marco. <laughs> <laughs> I guess uh, Marco's not here. All right, here. Marco. No, nothing Just for you. Just scratching it off. All right, scratch him off. Okay. Sorry, Marco. Oh, man. Yvette, really? Yvette, <laughs> <laughs> congratulations. Wow. All right. You get Walter's thing. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Okay. <laughs> oh, mine's real cool. Okay. For some of you, might like it. Okay. My favorite thing this year, it only comes in certain months, certain times of the year because they won't do a whole season long enough, is the first three seasons of Walking Dead. <laughs> Yay. Woo! And your name's not in here. Okay. <laughs> On DVD. Oh, it's awesome. The governor got glass in his eye on the last episode. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. You guys didn't hear that. <laughs> Jean, the spoiler. Jean Marana? 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 Jean? Jean, you here? Oh. She's not here. She's, She's not, not here. here. Man, Jean, sorry. Sorry. You missed out on that lucky one. Oh, man. <laughs> All right. Second shot at The Walking Dead goes to... Goes to Wallace. Wallace Coppola. Coppola. You here? No. Dang. Oh, man. Darn. You're going to get sunburned. Give it oh, we're just going to keep going through these things. <laughs> yeah, really. Dude, nobody wants it. What's the deal? Dave Clawson. There he is. <laughs> You're getting Congratulations. <laughs> no one wants it, but you get it. So. Oh, thank God we pulled a name. You thought, got it. Thought one would never come up. Really? Okay, Everybody's and not I can do mine now. You do yours now, yeah. I will do mine now. My favorite thing is, as you can see, we've been getting a lot of video equipment and a lot of all this kind of stuff, um, putting together the video show and all that. And I have been going to Best Buy a lot. And as Pete said earlier, we go in for one thing and we end up with a $2,000 camera. Or... <laughs> So I've I just been spending a lot of time at Best Buy. So my favorite thing, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> I've been spending a mediocre amount of time at Best Buy <laughs> within your price range. <laughs> Speaking of which, um, so I want to give away a Best Buy gift card for, I don't know, Two hundred dollars. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Okay. And who gets that? I don't like that one. Okay. <laughs> oh, what if that was yours? Jessica Doro. Doro. Oh. Oh. Congratulations. Yay. She's going Christmas shopping. Yeah. Very cool. Dustin's. Thing. Okay. Dustin's thing. Is that really what you're... Yeah, that's what yes, she's right now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and Kathy? Okay. If y you know me and you've been on Facebook, you know that my... You know, it's not going to come as a surprise. It's a Keurig. Um, I want to get as many people drinking those K-cups as possible. So hopefully, you know, you'll enjoy it as much as I do. And then join us on Facebook for the discussion. Right. This is cool. I feel like... This is going to be a life changer, people. <laughs> life changer. It really is. Life changing moment. You'll be drinking coffee and having to buy those stinking little square cup of things. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, pronounce that one. Bradeus. Michael Brady's. 
Mike, Michael? No. B R A D E I S C. Read that for me. <laughs> Is he here, Michael? Michael? Mm, no. No. Michael? Penny. Penny. Okay. No. I'm gonna dig down here in the bottom. Hush, Bill. It's my job. Pete told me how to do this. <laughs> Kenneth. Come on. Give Why me a Smith. Doing Give me a Jones. Kenneth <laughs> Agostini. Kenneth. Not, not here. Not oh here. my gosh. Sorry. I'm going to keep these little things and hunt them out on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> Look what you could have won. Look what you could have won. Oh, dropped one. Oh, did I throw one out? Sorry, I'm making it. Sean Fretch. Oh, my gosh. Uh, <laughs> nobody wants this carrot. Keep, going. keep I'm going. going. I'm going. Okay, I'm going. I'm going. I'm going so fast. Quickly, if possible. Okay, Scott Wolf. There you go. There we go. Yay. Got a carrot. Yay. Congratulations. Yay. Very good. Well, that does it for our favorite things. Oh, wait a minute. Yes. I get to have a second favorite she thing. She has a second favorite thing. And this is, and this is purely personal. Um, this is for my daughter that's here today. Um, she's actually graduating from college, and we wanted to have a little ceremony for her here on the ship. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have never pulled off a surprise in my life, but I did today. And you may have seen us up on, on deck. We've taken pictures of Katie and her gown all over the ship. <laughs> it's a perfect place if you need nice photos. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> I can't. And we also have a magical moment for you. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, did I do that right? <laughs> Yay, congratulations. Very cool. <laughs> <laughs> we were in your room going through your things this morning. <laughs> <laughs> or Grace was. <laughs> Very cool. All right, so now we're going to ask our original team to come on up. Should be able to bring that microphone over to the center, and they're going to do their favorite things. I feel like Engelbert Humperdinck. <laughs> All right, let's see. How about Julie? Why, don't, why doesn't Julie go for us with her favorite things? Okay. Um, my favorite thing is our favorite um, artist that is always at the Festival of the Masters. His name, well, their names are Jim and Tori Mullen. They design um, jewelry and they also carve songbirds. All of their pieces incorporate um, antique things that they find. Pieces from antique watches or maybe it's um, a set of opera glasses, um, all sorts of different things. Um, Jim actually discovered his passion for this when he was a teenager, and his first show was in 1980. He met Tori in 1985 at a joint show, and she had grown up with a father who collected antique watches and was a jeweler. And when they discovered their passion for these things and that they shared this passion, um, they got married. And now they do it as a team. So I'm going to give away a piece of jewelry. Um, it can be a necklace or earrings. I actually have some that I was supposed to wear today, <laughs> and I forgot. <laughs> so I will have it on this evening. So whoever wins this, Carol Merrill, find me. <laughs> You'll be able to take a look at it, but they're really unique and awesome pieces, and I'm really excited for someone else to have a piece of what we have. <laughs> so who's going to cool. win it? Let's go right here. Not that one? Okay. All right, Valerie Berkowitz. Yay! 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 I was really 
hoping that it would be a woman. <laughs> <laughs> or someone who enjoyed fine jewelry. Okay. John? Oh, correct. All right, I'm such a nerd. Um, my favorite thing this year has been this iPhone battery pack. I tell you, I got this before I went to Mardi Gras uh, to save my life because I didn't want to be walking around New Orleans with a dead phone. So I am always, always, always on my phone. <laughs> Even if I have no internet, I'm still always on my phone. So this battery pack is incredible. It's, it'll give you anywhere from seven to 14 hours in addition to your phone. It's, it really is something, especially if you're in the parks all day, you don't have to worry about your phone dying. I have, I use it all the time. So I am giving away this iPhone battery pack, mine, right here. I'm taking it off my phone. I'm it to you. Um, if you don't have, if you win this and you don't have an iPhone, they make other battery packs for whatever device you have. So we'll just work that out. So hopefully an iPhone person wins it. All right. Tessa Anderson. Whoa. <laughs> so she, oh, she's not here. She's, she's a kid. Oh. <laughs> I will hunt her down on the beach. Okay. <laughs> Man, the, <laughs> Dustin Moorhead. There he is. Yay. 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 Kevin. Okay, first of all, I have my favorite things with me, so you actually get to take it home with you. Yeah. By now you've all realized that I have a penchant for expensive luggage. <laughs> and this was uh, aided by my friend Heather Weil up in back, who, when we got to Venice, we went to Italy in May. And when we were in Venice, Heather told me about a place that I had to go see. So we all followed Heather across Venice. I mean, across Venice. And we walked in a row and got to the store and the store was closed. So we went back a second day and the store was closed. We actually finally found one and I apologize, I did not bring, if you go see Heather, she has one with her, but these are called malafette bags, which means misdeeds. And what happens is they take down the advertising posters that they hang in Venice and they make backpacks and uh, messenger bags and things like that out of them. And it's made by prisoners. So that's why it's called misdeeds. Now, I could not find a way to get a misdeeds bag here from Italy. They don't have a website that you can order from. But after doing some research, I found a place in Barcelona which does make them. And it's called Vejo. And I actually have a website with me if you're not one of the winners and you're interested. But the cool thing about Vejo is they put on their website the banners that are available to be made. And you get to take the templates and put them where you want them. So the bags, I have four of them that are actually designed by me. Wow. That's cool. All right. Four, you have four of them? I, well, actually, I have five things, but I have four of these. Okay. The first one, I thought the rooster was kind of cool. So we have... Oh. <laughs> well, I have a website for you. Yeah, you want to come be Carol Merrill? Yeah. So this one I'm pulling out now is for the rooster bag? For the rooster bag. All right. Rooster thing. Maybe a farming type girl will like this one, huh? It's cute. cute. All right, here we go, here we go. Oh, I dropped that one. Jennifer. I know her last name's not George. How do you pronounce that? Gooch. Gooch. Are you here? Jennifer. There she is. Yay. 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 These are great. They're really lightweight, they're waterproof, and they're green. Kevin's rooster bag. Okay. The next one I have oh. uh, has an yeah. elephant. They're getting them nailed soon. I want to ride it? Okay, cool. The next one I have is for a zoo. Uh, it was a zoo banner in Barcelona, and it has animals all over it. Ooh. And Barcelona's. All right, here we go. Huh? Okay. Who do we have? Christian Fend. Who is it? Christian, Christian Fend. Fent. Fent. Nope. 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 Next. All right. 
No. Uh, no. Philip Allen. Who's that? Congratulations. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> the next one I have wow. I thought was really cool because it has actual faces on it that and it's nice. kind of a gray bag. Wow. Again, these are all I placed all the templates and <laughs> picked them out and gray face bag. Oh, here we go. Oh. Is that a present? Tom Owinsky. Osinski. No. Tom Osinski. Tom Osinski. Yeah. There you go. Carol Merrill's going to run it up the aisle. Okay, the last one of these I had. There's a lot of runners, so I'm hoping this wow. goes to a runner. And that's these, really cool. Oh wow! This is a Barcelona running bag. Wow, nice. Cool. It's a crush. Um. Oh yeah. <laughs> Dude, Dude, that's an awesome bag. And Patricia Canamori is going to get it. Is she here? Patricia. Patricia. Yay. And finally, again, I have to give credit to Heather. We were walking around the Food and Wine Festival, and Heather says, you remember those bags we bought in Venice? And I said, yes. Yeah. She said, did you know they make this year they make bags out of last year's bags. And it's my understanding that they sell out immediately. Well, I happen to find one. And it seems that everybody I've shown this bag to, they tell me this is the perfect bag. Because what happens is when they cut these uh, flags and banners up, you never know what kind of the banner you're going to get. So I purchased one at the Food and Wine Festival this year, and they tell me it's absolutely perfect. On the front it says Epcot's Food and Wine. Wow. And if you open it up, you get the full advertising. Oh, cool. we can't see it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. People will actually model it for you. Will you? Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> I should have asked first, huh? Oh. 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 And so Ethan Hatfield. Are you here, Ethan? No, nah. too bad. Okay. <laughs> and we're gonna go on this amazing. It's oh, it's cool. It is. Cool. That is nice. Yeah. That's wow. very nice. Who gets it? Sam Sunderly. Oh, yay! Yay! Awesome! Yay. Awesome! Mm. Oh, good. And before I give up the yay. microphone, I have to say thank you, Heather, for the inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> All right. John and I have a joint favorite thing. Why don't you, uh, why don't you go ahead? All right, our favorite thing was actually an experience we had this year. And uh, it was our last backstage magic that we took. And Kevin explained a little bit about this in his Adventures by Disney presentation. But we had gone to Imagineering for the day, and they split us up into two, two groups. And one group got to see one cool thing that I'm not going to tell you what it is. And the other group got to see another cool thing that I'm not going to tell you what it is. <laughs> but as these groups passed each other by on the sidewalk, there was much competition. Our thing is cool. Wait till you see. Our thing is awesome. No, our thing is better. And it, for some reason, this really struck me. Like we had seen such great stuff and we had such a great experience. <clears throat> so do you want to tell them what we're giving away? Someone is going to join us, right? Or a separate one. Or a separate one. You can join us on the June Backstage Magic Trip. <laughs> Two adults. Now, if you can't make the June trip, we'll send John another one. But you're going to go see the backstage. You're going to go experience the Backstage Magic Trip that we have been talking about for years that a number of people in this room right now have already done that can tell you how incredible the experience if you is. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, yeah. Wow. There's a bunch of them. Yep. So Am I lying? <laughs> All right. <laughs> nah. So let's see who's going to win okay. a backstage pressure, magic trip. Pressure. It's pressure. 
All right, we ready? Crystal Henderson. Oh. oh, man. That's what you get for not showing up for my show. Yes. <laughs> okay. Is that it? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Let's see, let's see who's next. <laughs> okay, okay. You got a good one? I got a good one. I can tell. Hope I can read the last name. Leah DeBoos, DeBoss. Wow. There you go. Cool. Congratulations, Leah. Yay. <laughs> Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Welcome, welcome, welcome to my world. I give away these trips. This happened when I told Dustin he was going to London. London and Paris with us? Oh, okay. I just gave you a trip. Can I get some affect here? Some reaction, anything. Jump, scream. Like, like the price is right. Make believe I'm Bob Barker. Attack me. <laughs> Congratulations, Leah. Thank you, everybody. Our next show, our next show will go up January 3rd. We're taking our usual winter break. We'll be back with you again next time, January 3rd, with the next edition of the Diz Unplugged. Thanks, everybody. It's been a great cruise. Have a great one.